Welcome to today's webinar, Scriptless Testing with UFT and BPT. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'll be your host today. My name is Matt Anger and I'm a Senior Solution Architect with Results Positive. Results Positive is an HPE Platinum partner. We offer a number of different services around UFT and the ADM suite of products. In particular, we offer various rapid start upgrade engagements. We also offer virtual ser server farm hosting for UFT and best practices and training services around UFT and BPT. You can reach us at www.resultspositive.com. Today's speakers will be Clint Sprov and Roe Weisbert. Clint is a Senior Product Marketing Manager for HP Software Functional Testing. He has also been an independent consultant specializing in test management and automation. Previously, Clint was Director of Product Strategy for the Borland Solutions Division of Microfocus, where he created Borland's mobile strategy for functional test automation. Roe is an inbound product marketing manager for Hewlett Packard. He's been working for Hewlett Packard since 2011. Roe is responsible for the R&D's inbound product management aspects of unified functional testing and BPT. Just a few housekeeping items that I'd like to cover quickly. Today's session is live for all Vivid members. The recording will be posted in the webinar section on the Vivid website, visible for all of our members. Additionally, today's slide deck and webinar recording will be made available to you. We will send you the link via email once they are posted to the Vivid website. If you have questions as we go along, please type and send them in the questions pane in the webinar control panel on your right hand side. So let's get started. Okay guys, thank you very much. Uh, great having you here. Uh, my name is Roy Weisbert and I'm the inbound product manager leading the uh, UFT and BPT agenda. Today uh, we are about um, to take a closer look on the scriptless testing along with uh, BPT primarily uh, as part of UFT. But first let's have uh, a ve very uh, high level view on the value of BPT. I know that um, BPT at this point might be a, a bit new to, uh, uh, to people so uh, what I like to do is actually to get everybody on the same page uh, with the gracious help of this little fellow here. So just for us to be on the same page uh, of what is BPT and what are the things that we are about to, to tackle in this particular session. We have of course UFT. UFT benefits uh, the long uh, lasting um, support of wide array of technologies having functional testing with a GUI testing uh, approach. It also benefits the ALM integration. ALM application lifecycle management formerly known as QC which also is a product by itself that uh, requires a session just to uh, articulate what ALM stands for but specifically BPT will be considered right around here as kind of a supplement, a framework or business process testing capability that would enable something that uh, should transcend beyond just the good old GUI testing. Having said that, I should mention that BPT as a framework uh, allows actually to utilize the object repositories and the management uh, tools and utils that UFT just uh, offers. Of course, it benefits from the uh, technology stack and whatever technologies that uh, UFT uh, comes within uh, in its belly. But on the other hand, it also gives some more uh, supplements to the user. And this is exactly what I'm about to show you. 
before we get to uh, the point that we will articulate what is the core value prospects of BPT, let me just share in a, a very high level the uh, comprising elements of what we call BPT. A BPT test would uh, be comprised uh, predominantly with those assets. We would call them business components. Business components or BCs, as we will refer to those uh, further on this uh, session, uh, are nothing more than uh, scripted assets as a bundle of those repositories for the objects uh, as well as uh, different uh, scripted uh, assets that could be attached to those different keywords and so forth as well as um, a connectivity to something that we call application area that would probably be uh, considered as the configuration container for this BC. This BC is actually a building block. Try to imagine that you have a flow, some kind of a business process that uh, a, some kind of a business expert, subject matter expert, a business analyst, somebody that needs to articulate the uh, a business process in a meticulous way uh, should first know his way around the business process itself, hence the name BPT. So he needs to know the business process pretty much good, as well as to articulate those in kind of a, let's say, drag and drop approach to actually have those components articulate one business process. This might be just one. However, those ones could be reused in different business processes. Let's say that this particular one might be even the second or the third component being used in a completely different business process. So implicitly I just stated two things. One is that you can actually break down the business process out of the knowledge, the sheer knowledge that you have on the business process. Second, you are going to reuse those in order to optimize. Uh, and uh, in addition, it allows the uh, optimization of the scripted components that you have as well as uh, to have the maintainability of ALM. So this would be the last piece of, of the puzzle because BPT cannot actually live without ALM. All those assets that I just articulated, this one, this one, and of course the BPT test that comprises those business components, all of those actually reside and exist and totally managed by ALM. So this is a very, very good point of uh, scalability and so forth, but again, I won't uh, deep dive into the ALM perspective. So let's now just uh, return back to uh, the PPT. Sorry for that. And have a closer look at the sheer value that it offers to the user. First, as we stated, there is a component-based uh, approach. This is a framework built upon the uh, basis of uh, components or building blocks, as, as we call those. In addition, we have the uh, artifacts that uh, would streamline the creation as well as maintenance. Remember, we also talked about reuse of those assets, which is kind of a headache by itself. So that would mitigate and actually optimize those. In addition, we not, not only use those as reusable components uh, out of those uh, test assets, but also gave much emphasis on data-driven approaches. We will go over the whole data-driven approach as this session uh, will go along, uh, and it has a dedicated se um, a section just for the data handling. As mentioned before, the target audience for that will be both automation engineers as well as business analysts and subject matter experts. For automation engineers who are well, who are well acquainted with UFT, GUI test, and maybe even BPT, you are about to see some things here that will be uh, pretty much uh, uh, new and to some extent would actually make the lives of the automation engineers, even the highly skilled, a bit less complex with handling their assets. On the other end of this uh, uh, statement, there's also the business analyst, somebody who is well acquainted with the business processes, who not necessarily is uh, keen to go and deep inside the VB script and so forth, but yet he needs to uh, create runnable 
tests something which is a runnable asset that could validate something without uh, getting to know the scripted assets uh, that uh, in the best way and that is actually what uh, BPT uh, bridges for. Of course we had the multiple technologies and the integration with HPALM and the mobile center but at this point I will just uh, articulate what are the uh, five prominent uh, um, themes that we tackle just before we will actually uh, go ahead and take a look at those uh, on a live uh, running uh, environment. First and foremost, in order to serve the business analysts or subject matter experts, we have the scriptless uh, approach, meaning that uh, we've enabled and uh, optimized the rich keyword view in order to accommodate different needs. I will also make some demonstrations of this just for the sake of showing how easy it is to construct those keywords. In addition, there is the entire section that I mentioned before um, with handling data. It uh, transcends far beyond just having something to, uh, to handle in your scope of your test. It goes all the way to exporting and importing those assets or even doing by a dynamic binding of those. In addition, it also serves some optimization of coverage and even gets to the point of synthetic data generation for the sake of your test and even other tests. Uh, and remember that uh, the reusability is also a, a key uh, notion here in the, this whole BPT notion. So again, the data itself is something that we also put much emphasis on the reusability and uh, agility of it. In addition, BPT as a framework or any framework is, doesn't deserve its name unless it accelerates things. It should use what it has but in a smarter way. It should uh, leverage existing assets and to construct uh, constructions that would actually make the user uh, live happily with uh, the product and make things pretty much faster everything like uh, creating the test, maintaining the test, even aids just to see things, how things are changed, whether you can track changes and so forth. We will go through those uh, again. In addition, we also added a, a dedicated section called the Packaged Applications Kit. This would primarily be used at this point for SAP GUI, um, a client, and comprised of three uh, different uh, artifacts. One is a, a smart way to do auto componentization. Remember we talked about the whole notion of building blocks so somebody should fragment those so we even went beyond that and we do that automatically. In addition we have also the change detection and the smart reuse mechanism that actually offers for the user the capability hey look you have something that you can reuse why not uh, use that you have the similarity rates and so forth. And again, I will go through each one of those elaborately during this session. So let me just uh, go ahead and switch my screen to a much convenient uh, one, this one. And we have here UFT. We will start with um, some very basic uh, um, uh, scenarios. In this case, I will keep those add-ins uh, on. Those just indicate that uh, I will have the SAP web and WPF. The WPF is because I'm about to invoke the, um, a, the demo uh, application that uh, UFT comes along with uh, in its belly in every installation. As you can see, it's uh, it's a 1253 version of uh, UFT and now what you're actually see on the screen is the first glimpse on uh, something which is quite different. Uh, let me just roll back to the original view so you can actually see the difference. This is how UFT in its regular um, uh, default mode would look like. However, we added uh, a specific view specific BPT view and that it comes from two uh, different perspectives. One, in order for the user to focus specifically 
just with BPT assets. For example, I would try to make a new test, it would only give me the business process test or business process flow. You won't have here all the, all the other artifacts such as GUI test somewhere here and API test. Only dedicated things just for BPT. Even the help, everything here is uh, revolves around specific BPT assets. The second one will be uh, how to do things fast. Meaning that if you'd like just to start your test, you have this tile, you can just go ahead and start. And this is exactly what we are about to do. Let's start with creating a BPT test in this accelerated way. For the sake of demonstration, we have here this application. So this is exactly what uh, happens now. Let's try uh, and automate this uh, UI called HP My Flight. So I will call my uh, test flight reservation or flights, flights GUI. This, that would be the name of my test. However, remember that we talked about it, that we have the building blocks, right? So at this specific point, UFT actually will state, okay, no problem, I've created the, the test, but now would you like to give this component, this building block, a meaningful name? Of course I will, I will just call it login because that will be the first stage that might be even reused among different tests. Deliberately I will create this as a keyword, uh, keyword uh, view, uh, GUI component, in order for us to take a look at the script uh, artifacts. The scripted uh, for the sake of uh, uh, things or proper manner is nothing more than the good old VB script and behind the scenes that is the case also for that baby here. However, people, especially business analysts, subject matter experts, people who are acquainted with the business processes don't necessarily need to go and deep dive inside those VB script assets. Let's just go ahead and add this. At this particular moment, UFT will uh, enter the recording uh, state. I will make a successful login, but at this moment I might ask myself, okay, this is a different screen, right? I need a different business component. Should I just stop my test? No, of course not. I can actually add a new business component and from that moment on it should continue recording the relevant script line. So let's just uh, go ahead and do that. Let's call this one book a flight. As from this moment on, everything that I will do on the screen will be recorded in the scope of this newly created uh, consequent uh, um, a business component. Let's do that from Paris to Zurich and let's have some date. Let's have first class because all of us like it and again, we went through um, a different uh, screen. So as from this moment on, I can go ahead and do uh, whatever I want. Primarily, I would like also to create a new business component to represent this specific screen on the uh, on the screen. We'll call it flight selection. By the way, each one of those could be represented with a snapshot that is automatically captured but if you uh, if you think that you want to have something that you would like to uh, uh, regard as the representative of this uh, UI you can might as well do that and that will be the snapshot that we will see right after the test uh, will be created we will actually see those representing uh, snapshots. In addition we can also have dedicated capture mode. Try to imagine that now I'm recording something, okay? Now I recorded this selection. However, I know that at some point I would like to have this button in my application, but I really don't want it to be included in my script. So let's just uh, capture this. It will capture area. For the sake of demonstration, we will take the back button and it's in there in there meaning inside the object repository. There it is. As you can see, it's been added but not to the script itself. Now we can go ahead and do the selection of the flight. So at this particular moment I will just do a quick uh, fast forward. Let's do the order and just for the sake of demonstration I will even create a validation point, a standard checkpoint and we'll uh, take it uh, in the level of uh, let's say this one. I would like it to deliberately 
been uh, uh, a failed one. It should anticipate minus one, but it would see there 88. Next time I will replay this. So once we've done that, uh, we can start a test. At this moment, the test is being created and saved to ALM. So this is actually something that is important to, uh, to mention in the scope of uh, a, a, this um, a flow, because there is no duplication. It's there. It's already in ALM. What you see on the screen, actually, is just a representation of something. This something is the BPT test, but we can have um, different uh, ways of taking a look at it. For example, we can have this way to take a look at it uh, and even to handle it the flow itself in a much convenient way. We even have the this one where we have components with, that we can actually drag and drop those that are already in in place somewhere in ALM and we want to drag and drop. For the sake of demonstration we will show some other things here. For example, I uh, remember that I told you about the uh, a keyword but where is this keyword uh, language uh, appears? So if we will go to this specific component, you might be able to notice that it has a specific language, some kind of um, a object representation with the uh, operation and the value. So here you can see the login stage, the agent name, password, and of course the OK. For the sake of demonstration, let me just do the following. I will try and um, I will try and actually add. Uh, a new step. So let's say I would like to have those. You can see that I have those in my repository, but I might have things that are not in my repository. There it is. I need, uh, I don't know, this baby here. What, what I can do is actually to poke this one to say, okay, I want this WF button. Please add it to my script. There it is. It would click it. I want um, maybe something that is a consequence of this, like uh, opening the, the help and I will add accordingly this one. Let's say that I want to have the browser just for the sake of uh, saying, you know what, please close it. So as you can see, there is this language here, this human natural language, meaning that all of those are automated assets. I, re I uh, dictated the business components as an artifact which is totally automated and this is still true this will run and do that automatically. However, this documentation that here appears as just constructed uh, um, human language bits are being represented specifically in, um, in here, in ALM. So we can actually see that in action. For example, if I will go to business components and Let's see where my test is. There it is. I have logged in here. So you can see that there, it has the manual implementation and surprise. You can see the steps here. Implicitly what I just stated is that you can actually do a manual uh, running of those uh, artifacts or an automation facet. So each one of those business components actually has, of course I'm locking it and right now it would shout at me, but uh, you can see that it has uh, two representations, the automation and the manual implementation. So this is a very good stage of uh, articulating uh, those bonds or even adding things and it can actually sync with the automation, meaning that you can go ahead and implement things that even are dictated here as a business uh, subject matter expert uh, dictation. So. At this point, I guess that we can run it. Let me just uh, take a look at it and see that uh, it would run uh, as we expect. I will deliberately uh, try to uh, to invoke a failed uh, test. Okay, so let's try and have this one um, replayed. Deliberately, it should actually be stuck right around here. It would open it and then it should press the OK button, so it's really, really nasty. I will stop this at, at this point and they would uh, give you the rationale behind what I just did. Uh, turns out that uh, the order is quite uh, faulty. I needed to open the button and then uh, put out this uh, browser and only then uh, click on the OK button. 
how would I do that? I simply just drag and drop it, and there it is. Let's do that from the start. So now it should go flawlessly until it reaches the point of executing it, executing it uh, quite okay. Once it's okay, I'm I'm uh, clapping my my hands and saying, okay, <laughs> everything went okay. I'm saving it, and automatically, of course, the reusing uh, test and that could be even 10 or 100 tests are applied with this specific change. Now let's run it on the scope of this entire test. So as you can see, or can see, it would start running on the very same uh, thing, it would close it and of course go ahead and do the uh, uh, the second and the third one and right around here it would stuck for at least 20 seconds or so because as you remember I did it deliberately, it should fail on that, I want to show you how uh, a, a failed uh, checkpoint would look like. Excellent, of course we have the standard checkpoint uh, fail, as you can see Another new thing here, you can see the HTML report, I'm not sure how many of you are acquainted with it, but uh, this is the newly introduced HTML report, of course it will give you first and foremost the most uh, unusual thing, what actually went wrong, meaning that you have also the indication of uh, where it uh, went wrong and even the expected versus the actual one. In addition you can go ahead and uh, parse the test flow, as you can see it's been fragmented here to the very same basic elements, remember the login, book a flight and flight selection. Here you will see everything flattened. Primarily you also see the standard checkpoint but you can go ahead and search things. Of course a real life test might be even longer, you don't really need to go and pass it through. I can just, uh, for example, to look for where exactly I actually inputted my name there. Let's, there it is. It will give all the occurrences of where uh, this string actually appeared in this flow of my test. So this is just one uh, thing that should be mentioned with the ease of use. By the way, uh, not sure if you noticed, I still am using just my right hand with my uh, mouse, no scripting whatsoever, of course it's scriptless testing, and um, I guess that at this point I should also show you uh, the uh, data handling, because when you have a test, and this is a naive test of course, let's try and imagine that uh, at a given moment that you would like your test to be a little bit more versatile. Let's say that this login, I would like it uh, to be parameterized with um, parameters that I can uh, give from an outer source uh, origin. That would be the way to do that. For example, username, there it is, it happened, so it, it's already parameterized and attached to a parameter, there it is, it's being created with the default value that it bared uh, before. Let's do the password as well, and there you have it. Once I would do that and save all, it would actually shout at me of course because all of those assets are managed assets by ALM. Once I'm just uh, uh, saving it, it's already there in ALM, uh, meaning that it would say, hey, something just changed. Uh, this one comprising element has changed, you will see that right around here there it is, two input parameters. For the sake of demonstration I will go to the next uh, component and I will do it a little bit in fast forward and do the very same operations with creating different parameterization for this second uh, component. So let's call that from, which is Paris, and to Zurich, and we will, can go ahead and uh, do the parameterization, for example, for the date, or the departure date, for example, if, you, if we like. And maybe also the uh, class. There it is, same story here. 
each out and again we have four input parameters here but what actually I'm about to show you is that you have a neat representation of that for example you can see this uh, in the canvas view so you can see even those parameters that were created there they are all of those are being attributed to those uh, um, uh, business components now let's assume that I would like to have my data there it is remember John and the password so let's say that I want this specific login to do two or three or whatever iterations uh, instead of just one so the easiest way will be just to click this button and there you have it not sure if you're able to see it. let me just zoom in there it is there is an indication of how many iterations actually uh, take place so I can just go ahead and put here uh, my username with a non-valid password however um, we might need to do that on a much more convenient uh, place I mean we can do that from here but what if we have a large bunch of uh, copy pasted information and things that we would like to do like in an Excel so we can have it here export the test iteration into an Excel document let's put it in my desktop and there you are as you can see there are representations here right around here of the test itself and each one of the comprising elements which are parameterized here you have the login I can go ahead and just add another thing and whatever password once it's saved it should preferably be also uh, be able to uh, to be imported back once I want to import it it would say hey are you sure you're about to uh, override this is it okay yes of course and sorry there it is so you have it already there meaning that once this test is ran you will have those parameters being populated with this static data that I just mentioned uh, that I can even edit or add uh, and import back through an Excel file however this still doesn't complete the entire story let's try to imagine now that what I need is uh, something a little bit more uh, complex for example I would like this um, data to come uh, from outside the test and actually to be injected like here directly or you know what to come from here and to be injected right here to this book of flight how would I do that so the easiest way will be uh, to just go ahead have the properties pane we can see the different uh, uh, view on those uh, parameters here the this is it the username and password once I do that you will see that this would actually be automatically do the very same uh, operation that I just mentioned there it is it happened what it means is that those uh, values should be get uh, from the outside the test so implicitly I just mentioned that it actually automatically created those username and password in the test level I can go ahead and do the very same thing as you can see it's just one click to that it happened so the basic notion of what you see on the screen right now is pretty much simple and it's been visualized here you can have this data being uh, updated or loaded for the test let's say from ALM for example uh, being inputted uh, directly and injected to those components however we might need to do that dynamically because static data is not that uh, sophisticated so how would we do that so just for that we have this dedicated tab test configurations for those of you who are acquainted with test configurations sorry for the following and for those who are not uh, this is uh, pretty much uh, the idea behind uh, test configurations a given test it could be a BPT test or even any other test uh, for the sake of demonstration it might be even a manual or whatever uh, or a GUI test but a given test might have different facets to it uh, 
try to imagine that the implementation is the very same implementation. Nothing changes here. However, what can change is actually the data that you are about to inject to this specific test. If I'm uh, having a, a, an extraordinary 100% goody two-shoes uh, um, uh, data, it would be considered as a positive test because it would work like a charm. However, if I'm about to do some negative testing, I should actually inject some different bits of data to, the, uh, to this test. It can go uh, and uh, transcend beyond the uh, regular uh, thought of boundary, monkey testing, you just name it. Any kind of a different testing purpose that changes the essence of what the test actually achieves by using the very same test but with different data sets. This is exactly what I'm about to show you. So the test configurations are something that is really not that, uh, that new. I mean, remember I also told you that once you create those assets, so the BPT test, it's already there in ALM. Meaning that if I will just log in to ALM, you'll be able to notice that if I have, uh, for example, the test plan, so I have, of course, my dedicated test in my, my test, it has the test configurations. This is the default one because I still haven't created any other test configuration, but let's create one. How would we do that? Pretty much the same way that we've uh, seen before. If we export this one, let's just override this, so it would create this with the newly introduced linkage of those uh, assets. You'll see that I can create a new test configuration. Up until now it was only available inside ALM, but here you can do that at the very same place. If I do that, bang, you can see that it has the very same uh, artifact. However, as I mentioned before, we might as well also do that by ourselves. For example, this would represent one default uh, iteration of the test, but I might need a few of those. So let's try to do some uh, more of those. Let's uh, give uh, it this one the password, and you know what? I would like this one to be uh, trying to do a boundary testing, so I would give it like a very, very, very long something that can overflow something, maybe just to test the boundary. I would give it uh, the very same ones here because it's don't care for me. I would also want to have another, uh, let's do that with another user, let's say. Um, that would be a perfectly okay uh, iteration on something that actually can uh, go along quite good. This is a positive testing. And for the sake of demonstration, let's do a negative testing. For example, I will just uh, give it, um, I don't know, uh, my username. And with this, which is OK. However, somewhere around here, I will give it uh, TLV, which is supposed to be Tel Aviv and not TLV. And I will give it uh, even, even a non-existent uh, city. This is definitely not the name of a city. And even, you know what, uh, a date which actually does not exist in real life. But most importantly is to be in first class. So this actually states four iterations for the same test. Remember, those artifacts will be injected directly to those to those ones. As you can see, there is some kind of a notation here. It's not the value, it's just the name of the parameter, username, password from to date class, but the data itself should be loaded dynamically from here. Once this is done, I can go ahead and return back uh, to uh, UFT and actually create. There it is. However, at this point I would like also, uh, by the way, just to see that no strings attached, I will just uh, refresh it and you can see this is the very same uh, test configuration that I just managed to create. This slide's GUI too. At this point, uh, somebody who is not well acquainted with it will think, okay, how will I automap it now to the uh, test parameters by name, but what? So he doesn't need to be uh, uh, bothered by that. We just automate the actual resource columns from the Excel file itself to the test parameters names. Uh, that will be just one click away. Now let's pretend that I want this specific configuration to be a positive 
testing. Of course, you've seen already that I gave here some negative and boundary and whatever. So I would just dictate that I want rows, uh, I don't know, one and three, for example, to be, uh, to be the ones to articulate a positive testing. However, I would like to create out of the very same uh, data source, different data sets. Now let's pretend that I want to get to the point of a negative testing. Again, same story, one click away, I can have it all here and I want the negative one. In this case, it should be just row number four. So we can just go ahead and do that for any other, I'll try to do that fast forward. Uh, any other ones that are in existence. And there you have it. And of course that will be row number two. Of course it's been uh, um, filtered here. All of those are being created. All of those are here in ALM. All of those are being ready to be uh, executed through the test lab. It's already there. And even if you want to, create, to uh, run it from here, you can actually see that you have the dedicated test configuration that you can select. There it is, those are the dynamic ones. And the static, which is a default one. But we might as well just select one of those to run it. So as you can see, it dictated the different data sets. And this is exactly what I just articulated here. However, this still doesn't complete the entire story. Because up until now, uh, we've just uh, did the static as well as the dynamic binding. It actually would dynamically bind for the given test configuration that we would like this test to run on. Uh, but what about uh, test optimization? Uh, let's um, suppose that we have a large number of those and each one of those might have different uh, sets of data. I mean, different types of data, like it could be join and a run and whatever, and this could be a password and a very long password, and maybe just an empty clause or, or whatever we like to, to put there. So how would we optimize it? Because it might actually bear a very, very long test, uh, or a test iteration that might span over two nights. Um, uh, for those of you who are acquainted with pairwise testing, we also uh, embraced it here right here. So as you can see, we are in the very same place, still no string attached. I'm using just my right hand with uh, my uh, mouse and uh, no script up until now. I'm just opening this dialog and this dialog would actually articulate for me what will be the, uh, um, the different, um, the different uh, uh, values that each one of those parameters might get. So in, the, in this password, we have a valid password. We have something which is clearly not valid. We have something, let's say that I want to create something which is, I don't know, having this one. You know what, for security reasons, I would like also to try this one, just to see that it does the SQL injection and I don't know, empty close. So it would be, um, different uh, types of uh, uh, boundary, security, negative testing, you name it. For username, let's just settle for those two ones. I would like to have just two available ones. For class, it might be business. It might be even economy. And you know what? I would like also to have some uh, negative testing here. So let's do something which is clearly not a class because I want my test to uh, uh, to have this. Here we have, I don't know, non-existent date and whatever, Paris, TLV, oops, TLV, New York, and let's say that uh, the possible uh, ones for uh, the destination might be, I don't know, just two. Zurich and London. So up until now, what I did is just to articulate what would be the uh, definitive uh, uh, values that I would allocate for each one of those. But now somebody should actually do a Cartesian product on all of those and actually articulate from those runnable rows, like the ones that we've seen in the Excel. Remember, it was each row was something uh, that actually uh, inputted either one of those uh, input inside my test or component. In addition, 
we would like also to articulate, for example, this might be regarded as uh, a happy path, meaning that it would go like a charm. It would uh, be okay. However, this one, and of course with this date, uh, from Tel Aviv to uh, Zurich, sorry, not to Zurich, to London, might be regarded as an arrow path. So we can just go ahead and um, mark those. Now we can have the combinations. Bear in mind that you only see here 16 and 32 permutation. It seems like a charm, but uh, if you will take it in a linear one, you would get like 128 uh, iterations out of this very, very simple scenario, meaning that the Cartesian product would give you all of those um, uh, Cartesian product created uh, test iterations. But with pairwise testing, you have also the capability to generate those automatically with any pair being covered uh, here automatically. Once we generate this, we have this one, and let me see. Okay. Let me try to change the name, and excellent. That's what happens that you work in the in the R and D. You take the nightly nightly build, and you're happy, and then something screws up. So, of course, we have here the uh, a, the ones that were created with the default configuration the one which is a happy path, and of course the ones that are error paths. But you can see that as from this moment on, it's the very same thing. I can just automate that and actually say, you know what, I want line 2 until 8 and line number 13 or whatever. But here you can actually dictate what are the actual lines that you want uh, to, be, uh, to be in use. So 2 until 12 and line 13. For example, so you can see it live here. And of course, all of those are being created as test configurations. Last but not least, um, up until now, you've seen that uh, I uh, actually did this articulation by writing it, but it's really, really tiresome. What if something could have done it for me? So why not using it like that? I can go ahead and do, uh, let's say I want uh, a CT. So let's take the two. Uh, um, and you know what? I will have it uh, created as a city type. I want to have like 27 or 27 um, uh, of those. And you know what? I would like cities that they have in the second letter of their name the letter R and in the third letter of their name the letter E. How many of those do you, can you recall? It won't be fast enough like that. Bang, it happened. So as you can see, there is lying in the belly of UFT a lot of those, and we can actually play around with this. So if I will just put fast forward in that, we can even create dates. By the way, it can even uh, be uh, generalized to regular expressions, as you saw, or even uh, to be highly customized by the user himself. Let's uh, take one. Uh, range as well as the format. Let's create 12 of those. For example, bang, it happened. So once we do that, we can go ahead and articulate what is considered the happy path, arrow path, or whatever we see fit. At this moment, we will do the combination view. As you can see, 264 iterations. It seems like a lot, but if you would do that linearly by yourself, you would end up with over almost seven, uh, 17,000 uh, iterations. That would be like I don't know, a week of, uh, of a test. So you can see here the optimized coverage right around here. Once it generated, bam, it happened. It's already there. And as from this moment on, you can go ahead and manage this data to create new configurations for the sake of it, to download it, or even to send it to your peer uh, uh, who might be somewhere uh, other side of the world that can actually do the thing that I'm just doing. Just doing this, getting this information, auto mapping that and saying, okay, I have all the error path or whatever things that I need from here. I will take line 20 until 100 and there it is. It's here. So at this moment, uh, we are just before the uh, end of uh, the session, so I probably won't have a sufficient time to uh, go over the packaged apps kit for the SAP GUI.
However, I still want just to summarize. As you can see, uh, I uh, articulated the usage of the keyword, which also Baird never uh, touched uh, VBScript. I mean, we just uh, clicked some clicks on the mouse and just changed things or uh, poked for different artifacts on the screen and learned those and, and so forth. In addition, we also uh, managed to show here the uh, level of depth that we could get into the level of data management. So we can manage our data for the tests and it's fully compliant and scalable and of course it's inside ALM. Uh, but from within UFT with something that is much, much more rapid, you can just do that faster and uh, use it and once more uh, uh, without any touch of script, meaning that uh, up until now it's almost an hour and I only uh, made my right hand uh, do all the things with my, my mouse, which is kind of a neat thing when you think about it. Try to imagine that uh, you can really focus on doing the actual work of automating uh, things and let other things be done for you instead of coding them or script those. So by that, that, that time I will just uh, uh, stop for any questions because we have less than uh, seven minutes until the end of this uh, session. Um, Clint, do you have any questions uh, that you collected or Yes, um, Roy, that was uh, fantastic. Thank you for thank you for this wonderful demo and all the information you provided around BPT. Uh, we do have a number of questions that have uh, rolled in since the beginning of the webinar. Um, Clint has has graciously answered a lot of them through 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 the messaging system here in, in GoToWebinar. However, there are a few of them that we flagged and we'd like to ask you uh, for this uh, last portion of the webinar today. Uh, the first question that comes through is um, from Elizabeth. She's asking, she says, the MyFlight demo is, Windows is a Windows-based app, correct? Does this BPT does this BPT functionality work for legacy mainframe applications using term, terminal emulator? Excellent question. So as I mentioned before, the technology stack that UFT brings along is something that BPT actually benefits from. BPT is nothing more than the framework that actually helps you to uh, accelerate the creation of your tests. Having said that, UFT has a wide range of, specifically if we're talking about terminal emulators, a lot of those. I don't know, Hummingbird, IBM, whatever, you have a lot of those terminal emulators uh, that are being supported as well as it's fully compliant uh, with BPT, meaning that you can actually do all the neat things that I just demonstrated with respect to any regular test that you would probably be thinking of uh, executing or creating as a GUI test. Okay, great. Thank you for that answer. We also have another one that came in from Conrad. Uh, Conrad says, how does recording support dynamic screens? Do we have to record new components for each scenario where objects on the screen changes? Okay, so if I understand the question, the question is uh, whether we will have to record from uh, scratch when things tend to change on the application, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. Okay. So this would actually uh, be more concerning the maintenance level, uh, meaning that you can record. Yes, you need to articulate what is the fragmentation of the business components as I, uh, I just uh, uh, demoed. Uh, for SAP GUI and package applications kit, I'm sorry that I didn't have enough time to show that, but it would actually do that for you and would fragment those components automatically without you even need to interfere. However, once something is changed, of course, uh, at a given uh, reusable component, the best practice um, actually dictates that some of those tests that are actually using this specific component that happens to be in this UI layer that changed would be a failure or uh, to indicate that there is something that has changed there. So uh, once you uh, have this, you can take for a ride this specific component. You can have uh, the capability to debug it as well as to, uh, to apply changes. But once you do that, it should be applied automatically to all the, uh, uh, the affected the tests that are actually using this specific uh, component. So that would be the, um, the optimization of the reusage 
um, uh, aspects that we mentioned. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you for that. Um, so we have two additional questions that I want to ask. Uh, they seem to be a bit more technical in nature. We only have about three to four minutes left. So this mm -hmm. first question comes from Nirmal. And Nirmal asks about what about scenarios requiring for loops, while loops, and if conditions? Excellent question. We actually uh, added to the keyword uh, all of those. I can even show you. I mean, uh, this is uh, so for now it's a, a bit uh, something which is uh, a ah this is the 1253 I haven't shown you the the 1254 for as from 54 we have uh, you know what I can actually show you what happens when we have this one um, something around here that you have a dedicated uh, screen. So here I would just show it on a scripted one, but it might as well also be uh, on the keyword once 12.54 is out. Uh, so we'll see something that pretty much resembles this. Conditional loop statements, everything is here, the whole shebang. You have everything. So does this answer the question? That does, that does. And uh, Nirmo also followed up up with a question about database integration. Um, does is there any way to integrate with different databases and test databases? Excellent question. I love those questions. So first, you have the database uh, um, a, a checkpoint, which is already in place. I mean, you have this one, the database checkpoint, but you have to create those. Of course, you need to have the connection string and so forth. This is not new. I mean, this is pretty much all we have this in GUI tests and everything. For the new world, if Nirmal is using, for example, SAP kind of uh, uh, UIs and have, uh, a, let's say, an old data service that need to poke to a, to a backend uh, database, yes, we even have this one. So you can actually test those REST APIs through the dedicated API test and even get those API activities to be components inside PPT, or Great. to use those as components, which is kind of uh, um, putting it all uh, together. Great. Great, and I think I have a finale question. Uh, so before we before we close this off, and this question is sort of near and dear to my heart, um, you know, having participated in many different SAP implementations, um, mm -hmm. we have a question that came in from Jamie. And Jamie's question is, in SAP, a sales order, uh, transaction VA01, as you know, oh, okay. you, yes. you, can, you can create multiple order types that may have slightly different screens. The question is, do we have to create a separate script for each order type, or can a single BPT component handle multiple order types? Excellent question. So, as we know, or not everybody knows, but VA01, for example, might be created to create a sales order or even rush order. So, those are two different business processes. However, a BPT test might comprise of one of those. Uh, when we talk about those reusable components, it means that if, for example, we would use the package applications kit, it would fragment those according to the different screens and artifacts that we actually manage to click and interact uh, with the SAP GUI. However, when we articulate the actual test, technically we can create uh, some kind of a faceting of the test if we want, but if we don't, we can just leverage the fact that those are reusable assets, meaning those are being created and, and, and of course being handled automatically for us. Uh, so we just need to drag and drop this into different uh, types of tests and maybe the execution should choose between those and uh, based on, I don't know, parameters or whatever. I can think of two ways to implement that, but that would be in a nutshell because I'm already late and I owe you one minute. <laughs> no, thank you for that, Roy. I appreciate it. Well, to everybody on the call, thank you for attending today's webinar. Um, please be sure to complete the short survey after the webinar ends and opt in to receive more information from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And just a reminder that this webinar recording and slide deck will be posted to the Vivid website. In the next few days, you'll receive an email with those links. Thank you again, everybody, and we appreciate your time today. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.